Paul, uh, District Governor Elect Paul, for a wonderful presentation for getting us started today. Uh, I think it's going to be an exciting year of uh, service with, with Paul, and I look forward to working with him the remainder of this year. At this point, we're going to transition into our, uh, our learning phase of the, of the session, and we're very fortunate to have Assistant Governor Rob with us. Rob will take us through the rest of the afternoon as our moderator, and uh, he'll be introducing our speakers, and we'll keep us on time and keep us on track and keep us moving. And at this point, I'll turn it over to Rob. Thank you so much. Um, good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Can you hear me loud and clear? I'm assuming we're good. Okay. Yeah. Um, as, as much as I miss not being together, um, it's a good thing that we're doing this. As um, some of you may know, my wife and I recently relocated to a condo, and we're doing some renovations. And Today was shower day, as in we didn't get to take any showers today. So uh, be glad that you're just seeing me and not smelling me. So um, our first uh, uh, speaker today is Donald Hovis regarding our district um, public image. Uh, Paul uh, Donald is the district image uh, chair. Oops, excuse me, uh -oh. look at my notes here. Um, he's a self-taught photographer who's been working uh, behind the lens for over 20 years. Um, in addition to uh, education and hotel management, uh, where he worked in the hotel, restaurant, and tourism industry in Myrtle Beach for 20 years. He started his own company uh, called Tide's Eye Photography in September 2012. He's very, very, very active in his volunteer work. I have a list here so long, but I take away Donald's time. Um, he's currently serving as the president of the Chicora Rotary Club in Myrtle Beach, uh, along with coordinating CRAP, which you may have seen on the district uh, website, the conversations with Rotary Action people, and uh, he is in the middle of a three-year term as the public image chair. So without further ado, Donald Hovis Jr. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, George. And thank you, uh, District Governor-elect Paul Walter. And sorry, I didn't mean to copy Paul with wearing my black rotary vest, but uh, I did get the memo. So we're off to a good start, folks. Let me share my screen. Uh, it's an honor to speak to you today. And I hope you learned something from my presentation. Uh, a lot of what I'm going to say you probably already know, but I hope there's going to be a couple things that will uh, you'll take away and put on your roadmap for your year. And I will say I can obviously be a resource uh, for everything public image, but also leading clubs as I'm currently a president of Chicora Rotary in Myrtle Beach, as they said. So here we go. I'm going to share my screen. And... Perfect. All right, can we all see? Give me a thumbs up. Cool. Okay, so first of all, public image, folks, is a shared responsibility. Everybody on this call, everybody in Rotary, we are all public image people and we are all the public image of Rotary. My third bullet point here may be the, one of the most important things I say during my whole entire presentation. Whether you're at Rotary, outside of Rotary, encourage your, and especially during service projects, encourage, encourage your club members to wear Rotary. Russell Hampton is a tremendous resource for that. Throughout the next year and beyond, um, I am putting an emphasis from public image on finding out the impact of our service projects. We just heard from Paul that, you know, our why in Rotary is service. So if you have a shag festival in Georgetown or a duck race in Daniel Island, or you serve and park cars at Williams Bryce in Columbia, or you're working at the Heritage in Hilton Head, what are you doing with the money that is raised from that event? We want to know about your event. We want to know more about what you are doing with that event. It goes right along with the theme of serve to change lives. And when you're sharing information on social media to local media outlets, think of people outside of Rotary that could benefit from the information. Have them say to themselves, I want to be part of that. So here should be our target audience for everything public image, whether it's social media, radio ads, billboards, PR statements, what have you. Your target audience, obviously, number one is Rotary members. 
Number two, potential members. And then number three, the general public. Now, the next series of slides here um, speak music to my ears as a photographer. We're going to be talking about photography and public image. So if you look at the screen here, it's kind of a little road map, right? You see from photos on the right all the way over to public image on the left. The, the one I want to bring your attention to is the one I'm kind of going around with my mouse. I don't know if you can see that, but it says together we end polio where it's someone getting the polio vaccine with some words going across the picture. Paul had one in his presentation as well. Your pictures, folks, that you take out there at your clubs and your events, you can put this type of emblem on them by going to poaphotos.com. I'll say that again, poaphotos.com. You may be saying, what does POA stand for? People of Action, photos.com, poaphotos.com. That ought to be a resource for you. Very easy to do, too. Okay, so when, when taking photos, when sharing photos, you know, these are what you should think of when, when uh, you know, benefit strong PR. Does it inspire somebody? Does it motivate someone? Is it engaging? Is it, does it attract possibly a new member? We have heard from several clubs in our district that they have received members based on their social media. So social media folks and public image is very, very important. And, is it, and does it distinguish? Once again, here is that photo. So the people of action story. Obviously, if we're out there doing service projects, we are people of action, doing people of action and serving our communities. Focus on the community challenges. Show the action, show what is happening. If you're cleaning up the side of the road, have a photo that's showing up, you know, people cleaning up the side of the road serving at a homeless shelter, um, you know, what, what have you. Giving a dictionary to a child when we're able to enter the schools to do that. Giving shoes to a child at Happy Feet when we're actually able to do those projects where people are right there with us. Include the beneficiaries. So who benefits from your event? And obviously, number one probably should be show the positive impact of it. Okay, so the visual story out there, and this refers to anything uh, posted, said, um, you always want to include a picture. Pictures are going to be processed 60,000 60, times faster than text. Uh, it makes it easier to process difficult concepts. If it's got a lot of wording, people may not look at it. They may not read it. Uh, it's going to increase your retention. And most of all, it should create some type of emotional connection with, with you or with someone you know. So think of positive images, real life, everyday moments, several people co-working, neutral colors, diversity of your club and community, and avoid photos of large groups as they're very distracting and people don't really know what may be going on. As I said earlier, POA Photos is a resource. Here's a few more resources for you in regards to people of action. There's a style guide. There's examples, there's flyers, all of these can be found in the brand center, and you can also find some in the learning center as well. Okay, so going into 2021-22, some things that will be happening, that will be rolling out. We've got a lot of exciting things planned, and, and we look forward to having your input as well, as you're all going to play a part of this, is our CRAP program will continue. CRAP stands for Conversations with Rotary Action People. Currently, those are taking place on Mondays at 11 a.m. on Zoom. I highly encourage you to attend. If you can't attend, we broadcast those live on our International District Facebook page. And we also record those and we post them on the District YouTube channel. So if you can't actually make the meeting at 11, we highly encourage you to go back and view it on one of those two platforms and especially share it to your club's Facebook page as well. And we're always looking for speakers. So if you have a possible speaker, um, they can be outside of Rotary. We're always looking for speakers. Um, in the new year, we'll be rolling out a podcast that's going to be called the Rotary in Motion podcast. This is really exciting, and I'm really looking forward to this. Um, it's in the initial stages of working on it, but stay tuned for more information. The last bullet point I actually did at my club meeting 
where I'm sitting right now today with our members. We did not have a speaker today, but I wanted to do this because I knew I would be talking about it, and it was a nice test, is to get to know this Rotarian and the Y Rotary Series. So here at Chikora Rotary today, each member that was present and online had the opportunity to tell us their Rotary Y. It was truly inspiring to hear from people, some people that have been in Rotary for over 40 years, hear their story, and also hear people that have just been in Rotary less than a year and how their stories almost are the same. It tr truly was inspiring. Great, great uh, idea for you to do at an upcoming Rotary meeting during your year. Uh, with that being said, here's my contact information. If I can ever be a resource, I wanted to end with this. And uh, you may not, they may, uh, they may scold me for saying this, but I want you actually at this time to take out your cell phone and go to social media, okay? Whether you go to Facebook or whether you go to Instagram, that's up to you. But I want, if you go to Facebook, we have a Facebook page. It's Rotary International District 7770. Make sure you like it, number one. Instagram, we're on there as Rotary District 7770. Seven zero. When we post on our Facebook page from the district, it automatically goes over to our Instagram. Really, really neat. Um, so we want to build up those followings. And then if you ever have anything you would like, a positive photo posted or shared, please send it over. My email address is there. My phone number is there. If I can ever be a resource for you in anything public image, feel free to reach out. Rob? Back to you, sir. Thank you, Donald. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so our uh, next speaker is the fabulous Paula Matthews. Um, let me get here to my notes. Uh, Paula M Matthews is a member of the Rotary Club of uh, Spring Valley, Columbia, South Carolina. She has served as the Zone 33 Rotary Coordinator from 2012 to 2016. As a Rotary coordinator, uh, she worked with the 15 districts in the Rotary Zone, helping clubs become vibrant and stronger. Her term as district governor for District 7770 was in 2011-2012. She served as the president of Spring Valley Rotary Club in 1997-98, a recipient of the Rotary International Citation for Meritorious Service and the Distinguished Service Award. She and her husband, Ronnie, are also major don donors and Bequest Society members. Paula currently serves as District 7770 Rotary Foundation Chair. Without further ado, Paula Matthews. Paula, you're on mute. Got it. Now let's see if we can get back to my, oh. You're unmuted now, Paula. Yep. Of all the days, you know what? No matter how I practice, it always does this. <laughs> Thank you so much. And thanks for the privilege of being here and for the privilege to serve to change lives, our theme for this year. And I'm so excited that I'm following public image and Donald because I hope that this presentation will help you see that once that we need to do more with our public image and what a way to do that um, with our foundation.
I hope the power of music and visuals helps you see more clearly the areas of focus of our foundation that District Governor-elect Paul went over and the power of pictures and visuals that Donald went over. They also went over the why. I'd like to share with you as an incoming president of your Rotary Club, will you share the passion of our foundation? And here are some ways in which you can do that. The first one is the lead by example. And two of our speakers have previously told you the importance of telling why. Why is it we give to the foundation? Leading by example means to me that I am at a minimum a Paul Harris sustaining member. I give $100 uh, a year to the foundation. But for me, I see it even more than that. That's why I'm a member of the Paul Harris Society. And I decided that for $1,000 a year, I could one day of every year give $3. I love Starbucks coffee. My $3, I can give up a cup of coffee, $3 a day to join the Paul Harris Society. And I challenge you as an incoming president to put that into your thoughts and to tell the why, the why you give. I would ask club members to share their why. Remember the power of words and the power of pictures. Ask your club members, they have fantastic stories. And Donald told you just now, how they did that at his club and what a wonderful club meeting that might be to share the why the foundation is important to you, to your Rotary Club and to your community. And then I would encourage you to please invite speakers to share their foundation stories at your club. There is a speakers bureau listed. If you'll go to the, the Rotary, our district website and under the foundation tab, there is a cheat sheet. You remember those cheat sheets? Okay, we got one for the foundation. Now, the, it's lots of information, but down at the bottom will be the Speakers Bureau. Here's another reason I'm all about the foundation, because they receive the Charity Navigators four-star rating, the highest of, that they give. And as you can see, 92% of our funds go for our program awards. So that's a great uh, benefit of where your money goes and how well it is spent and um, just a wonderful thing. Now, I wanna make sure that everybody knows where we're spending this money. Every three years, the district receives funds from what we raised three years before. The part that comes back to us is referred to as district designated funds, DDF, we use that acronym. Now, here's the way we have spent that this year. And it'll be similar for next year, but it depends on, on some things that you're gonna do like the district grants you'll do. So here's the way it went this year. 100,000 went to Polio Plus. Now that 100,000 is above what you as an individual gave to Polio and what your club raised, 100,000 additional. $25,000 went to the Rotary Peace Centers. There are five of those within the world. The closest one to us is at UNC Duke and that is a scholarship uh, to uh, get a master's degree in peace and conflict resolution. Another 50,000 went to fund two global scholars. Um, the two that we selected this year uh, will both be going to Africa. One will be going to Ghana 
and she wants to get a degree, a master's degree in uh, public health fo focusing on maternal and child care. The other one will all be going to South Africa and he is hoping to get his master's in public, well, they both have public health undergraduates, but his master's in disease prevention. Both of these were students at USC and will go on to get their master's degrees funded by the dollars you sent or gave. The biggest portion of this money that comes back to us goes to the district grants. And you can see we spent over 160,000 this year for you, for you to do projects in your community. All that money goes straight to your community. Then in terms of global grants, there's a $15,000 global grant that has been approved and is uh, providing water and sanitation in um, Peru. There's another over $47,000 that is in the pipeline now at Rotary and being, and being reviewed. Um, I don't know if they'll get funded this year because the World Fund that matches this is being uh, overwhelmed with um, grant requests because of COVID. And so it, they may not get funded till next year. But the total we have for this year that we have directly uh, spent, and this, this is part of what came back, is the 398,000. So you see the biggest portion there was district grants. Well, I wanna let you know about, uh, no, I forgot. Here's something that we, your clubs didn't give to, but the money is raised there through other, other avenues. It's the D Disaster Relief Fund. We did some publicity on this, but it, you may not have heard about it, so I wanna tell you again. Last year, uh, we filed for a $25,000 grant uh, for disaster relief, and we felt it needed to go for hunger. We have so many people in our state and in our district who have food insecurity, and specifically because of COVID-19. Well, here's where that $25,000 went. 10 to the Low Country Food Bank, which serves 10 counties in South Carolina, 10 coastal counties. 10,500 to Harvest Hope Food Bank, serving the Midlands and the PD, which is in our district, but they also serve um, the uh, upstate some too. Another 1,500 went to Deep Well, which is in Hilton Head. Then 1,500 to Bluffton to the self-help. Another 1,500 to hope, help of Beaufort. So that is money that we didn't raise, but came back to us to bring food to the people of our state. And thank you all for those kinds of things. So let's talk about district grants. So what are some of your clubs doing for district grants? And I'm gonna tell you, here is the Florence Breakfast Club. The Florence Breakfast Club, part of their grant was to support the Palmetto Amputee Network. It's a support group for amputees. And one of the things they do is they have a meal. And so the club helped provide, the, their grant helped provide the um, meal for that function. Another one is the Sumter Sunrise Club. They provided books and coats Many of our elementary schools in particular, the teachers like to have a library in their classroom. And so this club purchased books for those individual teacher libraries in the classrooms, as well as coats for children who might have one. Now we get to the, here we go. The Hilton Head Sunset Club went beyond what was given um, to Hilton Head and there's the Sandalwood Community Food Pantry and they provided not only food, they provided uh, volunteer support and worked there. Then there's the Georgetown Safe Swim. This one I think is very unique and it's also, there's also one in Barnwell, the Barnwell Club has been doing a swim program for a number of years. And they're teaching children the safety aspect of swimming. And in the Barnwell Club, they actually teach some of them how to swim. 
So this is what they are doing. And then the Spring Valley uh, Club is uh, sponsoring an urban gardening uh, project in an area that is des described as a food desert. A food desert is a community in which a grocery store is a mile away from them, at least a mile or more away from them, because in those areas, sometimes there's not transportation, uh, readily transportation. So with this one, you can see the beds, they're growing the vegetables, and they're also teaching the people how to eat better and eat greener and with more vegetables. And so those are some of the things that your district grants are doing. Fabulous things. And I know you want to apply for them. So first you got to qualify. But before I go to the qualifying, this one is fabulous too. This is in Uganda. And um, Walter Hughes is a Rotarian in the Western part of Virginia who has been doing these grants for a number of years. The reason this is important is because you're gonna see a school. It's a white building with blue trim and you in this district built that. You built an elementary school for $90,000, only $90,000. Then you're gonna see a man from Florida who his, his uh, districts and others in Florida built another school in Ghana. And this one he'll tell you about and it's named after his son. So listen to Walter and see what you've done. Oh dear, dear, dear. Now, I, there we go. I'm over anxious. Hi, I'm Walter Hughes for the Rocky Mount Rotary Club of Virginia. And we're here in Ghana again because we're working on about $1.6 million worth of projects. We dedicated two schools last year at a, a state experimental preschool and a Bonsri elementary school. And yesterday and today, we are dedicating uh, two six room uh, classroom block schools with libraries, activity hall, boreholes, solar panels, and micro flush toilets. So we are excited about being able to have the, the two schools that dedicated this week and also being able to uh, break ground on the Adiasi Junction Junior High School. And then uh, we have the plans for another school near Kamasi and a school even in Kenya. So we're working with a simple school program to be able to understand that education is a big investment in the future. And then water and sanitation is what we've been focused on for so many years. And putting water in a community is vital. And then having the education makes it really special because then those children can learn about the future uh, with their education and become leaders in the communities, leaders in Ghana. And that's what we're expecting here at Sornazi uh, Kwadinden is that this school will produce many leaders in the future. an amazing day to be here today to inaugurate our new school from our global grant that so many have participated in that uh, makes you realize how the Rotary Foundation and when people come together that miracles can happen and ladies and gentlemen this is exactly what is going on here today on my left is the old school when we first came here and saw the children and an opportunity to make a difference in their lives. To 
my right is the brand new school and an accomplishment that involves so many to put this together. And so I uh, have a very special day in dedicating this to my memories, to my son's memory. And I uh, appreciate all of the contributors. So from the Tame District, Juan Denden Sonorasi, I thank you all. We truly serve to change lives, as you saw in that video. That um, grant was really spearheaded by um, Dr. Ann Matthews in our district here. And she raised money from several clubs within the district. And you probably saw some other district Rotarians. There was Gary Bradham there. Um, there was um, uh, David Michaud was there and others. So it was truly a district project that changed lots of lives. And by our standards, didn't really cost a lot, but made a huge difference in their lives. So that was a global grant. I also showed you district grants. We, there are qualifications for all of those. They're a little bit different. The global grant is a little bit different in terms of qualifications in the district grant but they're very similar. Today, for today's purpose, I wanna talk about the qualifications for a district grant because that's what you're gonna be doing first. The first thing you have to do uh, is be E-Ray by May 15th. This is very important. E-Ray, every Rotarian, every year. That means that everybody in your club gave to the Rotary Foundation and your club averaged at a minimum $200. And you have to do that by May 15th. I'm suggesting you better get that in by March the 30th. And we're gonna go over that in a little bit too because they're running kind of behind in collections because of, as everybody says, COVID. You must have two club members attend the MOU training, which we've already had two of those. Currently, those uh, uh, documents are coming in that have been signed uh, by the club uh, are coming in now. You have to do that. The last thing that you need for qualification to get a district grant is your current closing report uh, needs to be submitted within 30 days of the closing date. It's on your application. So you won't get any money until all of that is done. In fact, we're still holding some for this year because they hadn't got them in. So that is extremely important. Uh, also, I'll tell you that I, I, I believe all of these slides are gonna be on um, the website or on DACDB so you can get the slides. Um, if you're not able to take photos or, or see everything. All right, for the district grant, again this year, the minimum is 2,500. You can get up to 2,500, but you can also get less. The club does need to match whatever you get, the club has to match. You must submit your application by May the 15th. And clubs can work together. I don't know if we've had that happen. They could have, I just don't know about it. But you could combine those and do a, 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 a two club project or what have you and make a bigger impact. Um, the application is in DACDB. 
uh, in files under Paul Walter because it's those files in his year. It is also on the website under the foundation tab, along with the MOU and the closing report. Um, I want to go back to the district grant. Just um, one thing to take back to your clubs. Uh, and we'll be saying this over and over. Your club presidents have heard it, telling your president elects, but you, you never you never can say things too many times because uh, different ears hear different things. But if your club applied for a district grant last year, and because of the uh, pandemic, they're unable to complete all that they had planned, this time, just because of the COVID-19, you can take your district grant funds and the club match, and you can donate that. This is a check writing. You can donate that to an organization like a food bank. Uh, we had one last year that I went, it went toward a respirator in a hospital. Um, we've got one that's doing some Wi-Fi uh, for a, a a school or public library that's going straight to children. You just need to get a receipt and you need to let us know. You can send that request to me um, that you wanna uh, change your district grant and get make sure you get that approval to do that. All right, changing gears a little bit. Uh, your club goals, you know, we gotta raise that money to do all these great things that we're, we're gonna do and that we've done. So the goal sheets, I'll be sending those out to the president elect. We'll email those out uh, very soon. The polio goal for this year is going to remain at $35 per member. I ask that you please enter your goals in Rotary Club Central. You first need to be registered on my Rotary. Do that. Um, email me your goal sheet after you sign it. Here's my email. You can also email me for any of the other information we've talked about today or for some of these videos if you want to share them with your club. Now, I'd really like to ask you to identify the club foundation chair in my Rotary. President Lex can do that. Um, I found out this year we did about half of them were not identified and that kind of limits what the club foundation chair has access to because as designated on my Rotary, they can pull all the reports. Now, I have a couple of things I need you to help me with. This has to do with this year. So if you could just be my messenger and go back to your club, and help me out a little bit here. You know, we got this uh, virtual uh, conference coming up in May. We're gonna do some foundation awards. The awards are gonna be based what the club has given as of March the 31st. Because we have, we won't get the results until mid April and the conference is the first part of May. So make sure that gets done. You mail that remittance early. What's happening is the mail, they go to, they're working remotely, everybody from Rotary, uh, the Rotary Center and so they send somebody into the lockbox about once a week. So that kind of slows things up. So send that early. You can do this online um, through the My Rotary website. I believe your treasurers might have some ability to do that. Okay, here's a wild and crazy thing. So some of you might have been getting those stimulus checks. Maybe you're not unemployed. Maybe you're retired, you're living off retirement. I don't know. I don't know why in the hey who I got one, but I think that check's gonna go to the Rotary Foundation. And there might be a few more people in your club in that kind of situation. I also heard you got a dues refund. You didn't have to pay dues to the district this year. Perhaps a portion of that might go to the annual fund maybe even get you to the challenge goal. Take that back to your club, to your boards, and discuss that as a possibility. Here are some ways in which you might foster 
club giving. I've talked about some in the beginning about sharing your story, telling your why, asking club members to share their stories. But here are a couple of others. Return your foundation goal um, by May the 15th. So we'll have that down. Attend the spring seminar May the 21st. I can't tell you everything in, in the time we have here. And bring some more ears. Your foundation chair needs to come. You come and whoever else might be interested. Then the fall seminar will be September 17th. The spring will be virtual. We're hoping that the fall seminar will be in person, but time, time will tell. Please schedule two foundation speakers. Remember, that's on the uh, website under foundation in the cheat sheet. Review your, review your foundation reports monthly. Um, you can pull those up on the website. We also send you the rainbow report. So look at those, kind of track it where you are. Now, here's another visual. Will you serve to change lives? Will you serve to impact your community? Because together we can do good in the world. Thank you. All right, thank you, Paula Matthews. Thank you very much. Um, keep in mind, everybody, if you have questions during the course of the presentation, you can use the chat function and uh, uh, post your question and uh, hopefully get you answers uh, along the way. All right, thank you again, Paul.